everyone, my name is Mikhail Arce Ignacio. I go by the name Mecca, and I'm gonna be taking apart my set to show you guys what I do with an Ableton Live. I'm gonna be talking about some of the MIDI effects I use with an Ableton Live to control a couple of my melodic synth instruments within the modular setup. So first thing I'm gonna be talking about is using the arpeggiator to create a bass line. I have Wavetable loaded up to an empty channel. I'm gonna load up the uh, MIDI effect called arpeggiator. What arpeggiator is gonna do is it's gonna multiply the incoming MIDI notes to create a sequence and form a bass line. Once I have arpeggiator on here, I'm gonna use my push to play a couple of notes. I'm gonna use a lower octave, so I'm actually gonna use another MIDI effect called pitch to bring the octave down. I'm gonna load pitch up right before arpeggiator, and I'm gonna set it up to negative 12 semitones. And now we have. one sixteenth, And I'm gonna bring my tempo down to 100 BPM. So the next thing I want to create is maybe something like a chord progression. So from the same MIDI note, I'm actually going to create a new channel. I'm going to load Wavetable on again. And the next MIDI effect I'm going to be using is something called chord. Load chord up, just like that. And what chord is going to be doing is it's going to layer notes that are incoming to create basically a harmony. So first thing I'm going to do is I'll let you guys hear how it sounds. Let me just um, move the uh, Wavetable over and... This is the uh, incoming MIDI note, initial layer. I'm gonna set my first shift knob to three semitones up. And now I have two layers. And I'm gonna set my second shift knob to seven to create a very basic um, triad. Now if I use the same controller for both of these channels, I have something like this. Got a bass line underneath and I now have um, a chord in there. Next thing I'm going to want to be doing is to create a lead melody. So I'm going to use the same set of MIDI effects. I'm going to create another channel here. I'm going to load another instance of Wavetable. And I'm going to load a couple of different MIDI effects that we've used before. First thing I'm going to load in is the uh, chord effect. I'm going to add the uh, chord right to the beginning of my effects chain. I'm gonna set it up with the same setting I had for my chord channel. Three semitones and seven semitones up. Tricky thing with chord is um, every time you move it around, it could actually add notes that are not part of the scale. So we're gonna be looking at another MIDI effect called scale to kind of um, make sure that everything fits within my, my key, my chosen key. So I'm gonna add scale into the two channels that I've added on. I'm gonna choose the C minor preset because I'm gonna be working in C minor. I'll load it up to my second channel as well. And that way, if I'm kind of uh, moving between the different chords, they're all coming in within that specific key I chose. For the next um, channel I have here, I basically still have the same set of effects. I'm gonna be adding the arpeggiator again, but this time I'm gonna be adding it after the scale effect. So what it's gonna be doing is, first of all, my MIDI note's gonna be coming in, it's gonna be multiplied and layered by the chord effect. It's gonna be quantized by C minor, the uh, scale effect, and it's gonna be then split up into different sequences by the arpeggiator. So it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. A little bit faster. I'm gonna bring it up to 116. Since this is a lead, I'm gonna add my pitch MIDI effect again to the beginning of the chain, and this time I'm gonna pitch it 12 semitones up, basically an octave higher. Once I start layering them together, I can actually hear my first my chord and my lead melody. And then if I add my first channel in, I have my bass line. So that's how I'm able to use the same set of MIDI notes to control a couple of different devices using the MIDI effects within Ableton Live.
The next thing I'm going to be talking about is launch modes within the clip view. I'm able to use my clips in different ways. Several are triggered in immediately and several are actually loops that I'm gating through the use of the modes within Ableton Live. So let me get into the different launch modes. First thing I'm going to look at here is a loop. It's a longer clip. I actually use these loops as almost like breaks or rolls to transition between one part to another. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open up my launch section over here with an Ableton Live by clicking on the lower left icon that has an L on it. You're gonna see the launch modes right away. Right now it is on trigger, meaning every time I hit the clip, it triggers it right away. Below that, you're gonna see quantization. The quantization is set to global, so it comes in every one bar. What I'm gonna to wanna to do here is I'm gonna to wanna to call it up anytime I wanna transition. So I'm actually gonna change my quantization to none, and I'm gonna change my launch mode to gate instead of trigger. What that does is instead of hitting the button and then letting it play the whole loop, it basically plays a loop for as long as I'm holding the button. So gate is gonna sound like this. Every time I come in, stops right away. So I could call it up in different sizes and different uh, slices. So that's a loop set to um, gate for the launch mode and the quantization set to none. Next thing I'm gonna look at is my individual one shots here. For the one shots, I actually wanna control this more like a, a beat pad for finger drumming. So what I'm gonna do here, again, I'm gonna set my quantization to none, that way I can hit it immediately and it, I hear the sound right away. For quantization, I'm gonna to go to none for each of them. I'll go to my snare, set that to none. Head to my hat here, set that to none again. And then for my launch mode, I'm actually gonna leave it on trigger. What trigger does is every time I hit the key, it's basically gonna play from the beginning all the way to the end. So if I hit my kick here, place from the beginning to end and it doesn't cut any part out. If I hit the snare, same thing. So if I have my quantization set to none, I could actually finger drum and actually call the notes up individually. So so something like that. I'm able to use that within my set to kind of have an improvisational part where I could really jam out and just uh, have a little bit of a live uh, finger drumming session. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is using CV and gate within Ableton Live. CV or control voltage actually came out before MIDI became popularized and it works in a lot of interesting ways. For example, I actually use a sequencing here that is controlled by the gates or impulses coming in from this little module called Square Per Mod. you're able to use this module to translate MIDI coming from the software into control voltage for the modular set. I'm actually gonna be setting up a MIDI clip here to control my clock divisions for this little module called Voltage Block. Voltage Block is actually automating a lot of different um, sequences. It's basically sending control signals to all the other modules I have. In order to control that, I'm actually gonna set up a MIDI clip within Ableton Live. I'll just show you guys a sequence of notes. Kind of like a four on the floor sequence of notes. When I hit play on here, first thing I'm gonna to have to do before I actually uh, try and control my synth is I'm gonna to have to send the MIDI to my module, which is called Hermod. I'm gonna go into my routing section and I'm gonna look for Hermod. And the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is choose the channel that is uh, sending the uh, CV into my final module here, which is the voltage block. Based on uh, what I see here within my patch uh, bay, I actually have channel 8 going into the voltage block. Now that I have it set to send MIDI notes to the Hermod, once I start hitting uh, play here, if we look over to the voltage block, you're going to notice the uh, sequence is actually running. It's running really slow because um, my divisions here are set to quarter divisions. If I have it set up a little bit faster, let me just uh, pause that for a second and duplicate the incoming notes. So I'm going to have it set to 1 16th. Once I hit play, you're going to notice the voltage block is going to be moving a little bit faster. And again, if I um, actually shorten the notes, I'm going to be changing my grid here to 132. And I'm going to be duplicating this note all the way. You're going to notice it speeds up again and basically doubles the speed. So the cool thing here is you're actually able to alter the divisions within the modular synth by creating separate MIDI channels with different time divisions instead of having to go into the modular synth and program it yourself each time. So I could have different parts within different songs that actually uh, jump into a halftime section, 
and jump back to full time within the next part.